Hello boys and girls, it's good to be with you this week by the fireside. I hope that you're all doing well, coming to you from Connecticut this week. And uh, we want to talk a little bit about covering the nakedness of our fathers. You know, all of us have fathers, spiritual fathers, natural fathers that have made mistakes. And uh, there's something about honoring fathers, even when they've done dishonorable things, even when they maybe don't understand us, uh, that causes us to be able to reap a blessing in our lives. And, uh, and so I want to talk a little bit about that this week. You know, we're, we're really seeing a new move of God. There's a, there's a whole new stream that's emerging in these days. And, you know, it's different from the, the, the previous streams that we've seen. Uh, what, what we're seeing in this ecstatic move of God is not the prophetic movement of the past 20 years. Although we love prophecy, you know, our focus is not so much on the gift of prophecy as much as it's on the, the finished works of Christ and the bliss of our salvation and the supernatural Although there's been a supernatural move of God the last uh, five, ten years in terms of uh, healings and uh, the, the healing gift being restored in the body of Christ, our focus isn't on the healing gift, although we love healing and we see incredible healings all the time. I really believe that we really are seeing emerging of the streams and we're seeing emerging of the supernatural, emerging of the prophetic, uh, emerging of uh, so many things that have uh, the Lord's released in the body of Christ over the past uh centuries and and, uh, and even millennia, you know, there, there's a, a massive move in the, the whole Salvation Army type of service works oriented stream that came into the body where uh, people understood that there's a, a, a need to, to rally and to, and to uh, serve the poor and to be missional. There was a, a massive move of God in the Pentecostal movement at the turn of the century where at Azusa Street, where we, we learned about the fruits of the Spirit and, um, and and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, lots of things. You see, there, there's so many movements, so many streams in the church that have come together throughout the ages, and we want to be able to pull from all of those different streams, even from uh, you know the Catholic mystics and the the grace theology of the reformers in the in the 1500s. There, there's so much that we can pull from, but it's important to remember that every uh, tributary in the river of God, every stream, uh, tends to think that it in itself is the entire river. But really it takes all of the streams together to flow as, as one big river. And whenever a new stream comes into the river, even in the natural, there are swirlings and there are eddies. And, and you know, if you're, if you're a river rafter and a new tributary comes into the river you're rafting on, you could get sucked down in an eddy and, and, and that, that thing will pull you under the water and you can get stuck. And there's a lot of people that get stuck in the turmoil whenever a new stream comes into the body of Christ. Because uh, generally when a new stream is introduced to the body of Christ, it really gets the most resistance and the most persecution from the last new stream, from the last new move of God. You see that in, in, all throughout history. The last big thing that God did uh, is the very thing that persecutes the next move of God. Uh, you saw the, the healing evangelists in the 40s and 50s were most persecuted by the, the, the Pentecostal movement, uh, even though they were Pentecostal. Uh, you saw the, the vineyard movement uh, being sort of persecuted by the, the word of faith movement when it was birthed. You saw the, uh, the prophetic movement catch a lot of heat from sort of the... Uh, you know, the, the spirit-filled movements of the time. And, and really, you know, in this ecstatic move of God that we're seeing right now, you're, you're even going to see some resistance from, you know, prophetic type of people, people that are focused on healing gifts and that kind of thing. But because what we're seeing breaks a lot of uh, protocol and it's a really uncontrolled and untamed move, it's a, it's a really, it's a wildfire movement and it doesn't necessarily fit some of the protocols of the previous streams, it, it, it may be misunderstood. But the imperative thing that I really want to talk about this week is that we honor those streams that have gone before us and we bless them even when we're not completely understood. In uh, Genesis chapter 9, verse 22, you, you remember the story of uh, Noah when he, he got drunk. He had, he had made a vineyard and drank some wine. He was drunk and, uh, and his nakedness was uncovered. And uh, it says that uh, Ham, verse 22, Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father Noah's nakedness 
and went outside and told his two brothers. Then Shem and Japheth took a robe and held it over their shoulders and walking backwards into the tent, let it fall across their father to cover his nakedness as they looked the other way. Then Noah awoke from his drunken stupor and learned what had happened and, uh, and what his youngest son had done. Now some translations say he found out what Ham, his youngest son, had done. But Ham is not written in that particular scripture. That's uh, included by some people because of their own theological bent, because of what the story says. But it doesn't say that, uh, that Noah was angry with Ham. He says that he was angry with his youngest son. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily literally his son. I believe that it was actually his grandson, Canaan, who was uh, uh, Ham's child. I believe that Ham gets the bad rap for uncovering his own father there, but really it was Canaan, the grandson, who, who had done it, because it goes on and says he cursed Ham's descendants. He says, a curse upon the Canaanites, uh, and he swore, may, the, may they be the lowest of slaves, and then he blessed the other uh, descendants of the other, the other children. So there was a, a, nevertheless, there was a curse who fell upon the one who had uncovered his father's nakedness. And so guys, I just, I just want, uh, I want you guys to really uh, just get this, that, that we, this is a movement that's all about the love of God, and it's all about not judging and criticizing those who don't understand us, because I'm telling you, what's being released today is going to be a challenge to the understanding of many. There are some mysteries being revealed in these days, and there there are some uh, unusual things that God's doing in this movement that we're in, and so it's imperative that even those streams that have gone on before us, that we honor them, and it's okay to acknowledge that we're a different stream. We're, we're not the same as them, but we can still honor them. And we don't demonize one another. And we still love one another. And we respect one another. And we glean from what our fathers have purchased for us. We glean what our fathers have, where they've been forerunners and where they've plowed ahead of us. And the only reason that we're standing where we are is because we're standing on the shoulders of giants, okay? And so it's important that even if we go about, you know, uh, clearing uh, misconceptions of, of the former streams and maybe cleaning up some uh, religious or, or uh, heretical tendencies. It, it's, oh, it's okay to, to, to clean up theology but still honor those who have maybe um, uh, uh, spoken some things that, that, are, that weren't exactly uh, uh, the level of clear revelation that we have today. Okay, So we're always growing in revelation and there are times when our, our fathers maybe uh, don't see things in the same light that we see them but we still honor them, we cover their nakedness. And rather than exposing them and, and criticizing them, we love them. And so I just, uh, Lord, right now I just release the love of Jesus just to flow throughout these internet waves. And uh, I thank you, Father, for a body in unity. Not unity around a religious spirit, but unity around the Holy Spirit and unity around love. Not unity around bad theology, but unity around the shing ding ding of heaven and, and a, a people moving in love who uh, look past the, the failings of our fathers and rather honor them in their strengths. And so uh, we bless you guys. We speak uh, shakalaka, prosperity, favor, and holy go shingding all over you this week. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. If you've not yet had the opportunity to join one of our mystical schools, I'd encourage you to come to Northern California for our school on the coast in Arcata. These things have really been blowing up. You get plunged into an atmosphere of faith for the supernatural, the euphoria of salvation. We've seen phenomenal healings, cancers disappearing, weight loss miracles, financial miracles. One guy actually floated right off the ground in one of our schools. So you get really activated in signs and wonders. These are wonder working schools. You get plunged into the seer realm. You learn to operate more in uh, open heavens, uh, realities of, of the new creation, uh, so much manifestation of the supernatural. And if you live in Europe, we would encourage you this summer, we also have a mystical school in Cardiff, Wales. So you can sign up. These are three-day courses of intense activation, teaching, training, equipping. And if you want to plunge a little bit more into the new creation realities aspect of our schools, I would also encourage you to come to our four-day school that we're doing along with Benjamin and 
and Stephanie Dunn in Santa Cruz, California. This is Kynos. It's a new creation reality seminar where we plunge into the, the depths of the, the bliss and the scandal of the cross. And it's really a, a faith-filled time of, uh, of activation, sort of a blend of our mystical school along with Benjamin Dunn's School of the Bliss. Also, while you're in Santa Cruz, we encourage you to come to our Santa Cruz Church launch. This has been a lot of fun, just really seeing a community of uh, heavy, drunken glory, uh, faith-filled people just gathering. We'd encourage you, you can check out our website, thesantacruzchurch.com. Oftentimes, we stream our 6 p.m. Sunday meetings there on the West Coast. So if you're not able to make it out to Santa Cruz, you can catch us online. Also, if you have joined the Apple revolution and you have an iPhone, you can download our free New Mystics application online and um, just go to your app store, type in the New Mystics and uh, it's a it's just a good format for you to launch into our weekly Jesus trip videos. You get to see what events and parties are coming near you and it's just a, a great way to stay in touch with the ministry, read current articles and uh, really be more of a part on a regular basis to see what's going on. So God bless you. Enjoy the apps. Enjoy the schools.